The total effect of a person's actions and conduct during the successive phases of a person's existence regarded determining the person's destiny is a formal de definition of what Buddhism refers to as karma. Karma is known as an action that has consequences and has a no noun form coming from the root kri, meaning to do, to make. Thus, karma's literal meaning is the doing or making action. We are told that there are five conditions that modify the weight of karma. There are three subjective and two objective. The first of the three has to do with the persistence or repetition of the action. For instance, the action that is continued will have continuous consequences. The second and third are the willful intent on doing the action and the absence of any regret. Moving on to the objective conditions, we find that these karmic consequences are influenced by the quality and degree of indebtedness incurred towards one at which these actions are directed. It is believed that by practicing positive karma, we can determine a positive destiny and rebirth. Through reincarnation, we are born into a family and have specific form based on the realm. We take this form on the power of the karma, not our choice. As long as karma is being generated, beings will continue to experience rebirth. The purpose of the Wheel of Life is to portray the realms and destiny of those who are reborn by their karmic con consequences. At the hub of this wheel, we see three figures. These are the three karmic positions driven by the energy resulting from our actions. The first is greed, or the desire and attachment to objects represented by the chicken. The second stems from hatred or aversion portrayed by the snake, while the third represents the being ignorance or delusion. They are known as the three unwholesome roots because from them grows all of life's evils. Also, they are referred to as the three positions because they corrupt us from within. It is these three that underline all bond human bondage and misery. At the top of the diagram, we find the monster of impermanence, or Bodhisattva Yamaraka, which appears above the rim of the wheel. With a ferocious face, three fiercely glaring eyes, and a crown skull, he is a symbol of transitory nature of all earthly phenomena. The Bodhisattva Yamaraka is also the god of death, who dwells with all his minions in the sealed-up iron cities of hell. Here we see the connection in how quickly we go to destruction, to impermanence, to death. At his right, at the top of the picture, the Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara looks upon from up above. As the Bodhisattva of Compassion, he weeps as he holds the various suffering of all beings in the six realms and three spheres of existence. He is a link between the ordinary and the transcendental. On the other side of the monster of impermanence, we find the Buddha figure. The Buddha honors the potential nirvana, innate in all beings and creatures, have the opportunity of achieving salvation in f a future good rebirth in the human world. The Wheel of Life describes the cause of evil and its effects mirrored in all earthly phenomena just as it is experienced by everyone from the cradle to the grave. Picture by picture, it reminds us that everyone is always his or own, own judge and is responsible for her, their own fate because, according to karma, causes and their effects are the fruits of one's own deeds. A being's rebirth is part of the cycle of Pratitya Samutpada. The six destinies consist of a series of realms, three upper and three lower, and fill the whole inner sphere of the wheel of life. These states of existence are termed conditioned because they are brought about as a result of one's own actions or karma. They can be either positive or negative. The easiest way to attain enlightenment is to be born into one of the upper realms. The realm of the devas, or gods, is for the ones who live in unalloyed happiness and pleasure. The gods are shiny and radiant, and traditionally they are recognized as heavenly and also found on earth. In this realm, the gods enjoy the very long, blissful existence where nothing goes wrong. Everything goes their way. By building up good sufficient karma, one that aspires to Buddhahood can transmigrate and be reborn into this realm. Gods in this world partake in sensuous experiences as humans. The gods are not so far removed from the human dimension, and mortal humans too can attain godhood following the path of virtuous. The one who has evolved himself into a higher being in purely spiritual sense has created his own heaven on earth. Following the gods in the heaven realm is the world of the demigods, also known as titans or asuras. 
these spirits only know warfare. Not being content with what they possess, the Titans look to conquer gods of the censorious realm and try to grab them from their happiness and enchantment. However, their longing to possess and not to does not come from desire or greed. They want things because they envy the possessions and accomplishments of others. The achievement of others leaves them with a feeling of inadequacy and belittled. The underlying moral of this realm is that man is not content with what he does have, but discontent with what others do have. In the last of the upper realms, we find the human world. This realm is filled with everyday experience and is considered the most favorable at the outset of one's spiritual life because it contains a balance of pleasure and pain. Constant pain is demoralizing and numbs initiative. By containing both pleasure and pain, human life makes us aware of both these aspects of life in a harmonious balance. This moral is most precious in Buddhism. As mentioned before, the three positions is associated with the lower realms. In the realm of the animals or chiyakas, life is the life of the body. Beings from whales to insects are confined in fear and ignorance. All activities are bound for the satisfaction of physical desires and the business of self-preservation. This is a miserable and pitiful state of suffering in which all events are directed to the satisfaction of physical desires. Such a horizon is knowingly narrow and refuses to look beyond the surface of life at its meaning and purpose. Next to the animal realm is a group of ungainly creatures huddled together. Their distended bodies are the color of smoke. Their arms and legs are spindly and frail, and their heads are carried by long, thin necks, while their bellies are bloated, sagging masses, which their legs can barely support. Above their tiny mouth, no thicker than a needle, wide eyes are full of pain and longing. The sad beings are obsessed with perpetual hunger and unquenchable thirst. The hungry ghosts live out their lives for no other purpose than food or drink. Even if they get what they want, they get little little pleasure. The human hungry ghost is a miser f- who lives for his money, the collector who is never content with what he has but must have more. The last of the lower realms is known as the hell realm, which is known for being a place of intense pain and torment. Its subjects are victim from the most excruciating tortures inflicted on them by controlling demons. Flames engulf the entire realm, which is unbearably hot, but there is also regions of ice to experience the painful cold. The basic features of hell are constant suffering and relentless pain inflicted by furious and vengeful beings as a result of our own karma. The hell of the wheel of life is the same in the mental state mad manifest in all its painful detail however the hell world is not everlasting every process is impermanent and good karma can set you free the in-between states are called the bardo also the word for the backdrop of consciousness while one while it is not personified as all certain kinds of dreaming the bardo always exists The outermost concentric ring of the Wheel of Life is divided into 12 units, each depicting a a phase of particular cycle of cause and effect which keeps one trapped in the six realms of Sicilic existence. The first theme of the chain is ignorance. It is represented by...